All right, mates, how's it going? In today's video, chapter 14 of Shadows Rising by Madeline Rue. It's a bloody Christmas special, mate. It's definitely a Christmas special because there's like one Christmas tree and I said Christmas about seven times in this intro. Christmas, Christmas, Christmas. Some people believe you can't say Christmas anymore, but I've said it eight times now and no one's arrested me. Let's go. Back in Orgrimmar, Thrall was hanging about within his modest dwellings located in the Valley of Spirits. The other council members had chosen much more luxurious accommodations, but not this humble guy. There was a buttload of food on the table, near Thrall, but he'd kind of lost his appetite. Mainly because he'd received a message from Zakan. The assassins that had come after Queen Talanji at the council feast had struck again, and they were organised enough to have taken a name. The Widow's Bite. So that wasn't good. The shaman from the maelstrom Yucca then entered and joined him. Are you going to read that? Did you come to steal my supper or do your job, Yucca? Old friend, your missive reached Nordrasil and I carry your reply. The Night Warrior bids you come on one condition. And? Spit it out. She says you must bring what is owed. Through frowned? What the bloody hell was that supposed to mean? What else did she say? Nothing. She claimed you would know what that meant. I see. And how did she see? Her rage hasn't lessened, if that's what you mean. Of course it hadn't. If someone had come along and burned his home down, Thrall would probably be pissed off for a while as well. Very well. I can linger here no longer waiting for messengers and quelling council squabbles. Thrall then abruptly yelled the word boy towards the door, and a skinny orc page quickly appeared. Run to the hold quick as you can. Summon Kali, Amanathil, and Bane Bloodhoof. We depart for Nordrasil before sundown. Run right away! The boy vanished, and Thrall walked over to a chest to collect his belongings. I'm sure it's wise to take the undead woman and high chieftain with you. Will they not remind Tyrande of the Banshee Queen in their own ways? Bane despises Sylvanas, and the feeling is mutual. Twas true. It was well known that Sylvanas considered Bane a soft liability, a snowflake, even before he tried to overthrow her. Thrall then stepped out of his little hut, with Yucca in tow. It was too bloody hot in this city, and the former war chief couldn't help but find himself wishing he was back in the Grand, chilling out in one of the many cool shaded pools near his farm. And Kalia? Kalia Menethil wishes to bridge the divide between the Forsaken and the undead Calderai. I see no harm in it. Yucca cringed and Thrall noticed. You disagree? It would be better if you came alone. Half the council is already convinced I'm going to get ambushed in Nordrasil. Some concessions have to be made. Go back inside and finish my supper if it bothers you so much. <laughs> Earthbinder, to go without me would indeed be your downfall. I've negotiated safe passage with the druids protecting the world tree. I'm to escort you and your chosen companions. Well, I feel safer already. Tiala assured me the passage of the world tree would remain safely open for us. I'm to guide you there and then to Tyrande's location. After that, you're on your own. Thrall then considered Tyrande's demand. You must bring what is owed. No doubt Tyrande Whisperwind and Malfurion Stormrage desired some gesture, some remuneration for the war crimes committed at Taldrassil. Even in the Grand, even cut off from his connection to the powers of a shaman, Thrall had felt the moment the world shifted. It was quiet, distant, but he heard the collective cry, tasted the smoke in the air. But what did he owe? He wasn't even there. Although, innocence in one specific crime did feel like a bit of a weak shield. So, Thrall gazed all around at the great city of Orgrimmar and imagined it aflame, imagined it reduced to smouldering rubble. What would he need if such a thing were to happen? What possible gift could soothe the wound so impossibly deep? Sometime later, Thrall, Bane, Kalia and Yucca arrived in Mount Hyjal and observed the great world tree, Nordrasil. Oh, it's beautiful. The crown of the heavens, what a gift to walk in the shade of a world tree. The light here is so different. The way it strikes the leaves. And the flowers. Have you ever seen blossoms of truer blue? It is truly a blessing from the earth, mother. Although Kalia and Bane were obviously having a whale of a time acting like a bunch of hippies, Thrall did not feel quite so at ease. There is a pall over this place. We should move quickly. Come. Yucca then started to lead the way down the slope, and as the rest followed, Thrall had a brief word with his companions. Take care with your words. Perhaps it is better now to listen. Chatter will not help heal old wounds. Do you sense the darkness that hangs over this place? It's morning. I didn't realize at first. Been distracted by the beauty of the world tree. But the darkness. It's morning. We're trespassing on their grief. Thrall nodded and was pleased that they both understood the gravity of the situation. Looked like he'd chosen his companions wisely. I would not have come at all, but the spirit realm is fractured and our shamans cannot find a cause. Some more time later, the group reached the top of a hill and found four figures waiting for them, two of which seemed very regal indeed. 
One of them was pretty obviously Malfurion, considering he had antlers and shit. The other eagle figure being Tyrande. And the remaining two were Maiev Shadowsong and Chandris Feathermoon. Yucca then raised a hand, signalling the group to stop their advance, putting several feet between them and the Night Elves. As promised, Thrall, son of Juratan, Bane Bloodhoof, High Chieftain of the Tauren, and Kalia Menethil, Princess of Lordaeron and Counselor of the Horde Forsaken. They have come to discuss the disturbances noted by the Earthen Ring and the Moonglade Druids. Thank you for agreeing to this meeting. Yucca and the others feel a sinister interference in the spirit realm. Our dead are not passing on as they should, and they are heedless of the shaman attempting to guide them. And then there was awkward silence. The night elves didn't even blink. Yucca tells me your priestesses have made similar discoveries. We have come seeking answers. Will you speak with us? More silence. At his side, Thrall could sense Kalia shuffling nervously, but Thrall collected himself before saying anything rash. This was slightly insulting, but it was important to remember what had happened. Thrall then looked into Tyrande's eyes, into the hypnotizing aura of darkness, and saw pain, constant and potent. I brought what you wanted, what is owed. I bring in the sincere apology of the Horde. We are no longer a single voice spoken through the mouth of a war chief, but a whole host of voices. We formed a council, so that never again will one take power and abuse it as Sylvanas did, as, as Sylvanas used that power to slaughter your people. Thrall could have sworn the moon above them glowed even brighter at the mention of the Banshee Queen's name, as if saying her name out loud had ignited its anger. Kalia Menethil has come. She stands as an example of how we hope to change. Lillian Voss now speaks for the Forsaken. Both women seek to reforge themselves anew, free of Sylvanas' poisonous influence. Those who are sympathetic to the traitor have been exiled. Bane Bloodhoof even sought to overthrow Sylvanas, a remover's war chief. It is only a shame that he did not do so sooner, and that more did not listen. And silence. It was like talking to a wall. A really angry wall. But, to his surprise, Chandra's Feathermoon then broke the silence. You will understand our hesitation, Thrall. Even promises made by our own allies have been broken. I would hear more of what you have to say, but only because I crave justice as dearly as I crave healing for our people. <laughs> have a care, Chandris. Listen to his honeyed words at your peril. Believe him at your peril. Join the Horde to hunt Sylvanas at your peril. For once the deed is done, you will again find their daggers at your back. I believe justice is action, Maiev. I've told you as much before. Whose action? The Horde's? Whose action? What justice? Don't know about you, but I would not be content with only Sylvanas Windrunner receiving her due. She was not alone when Teldrassil burned. Not all of the Horde stood with her that day. And yet she spoke for your side. Acted for your side. But now you've scattered yourselves to a council, dispersing the blame. Hiding behind cowardly revisions of a history that will not be forgotten. I doubt you would like to be held accountable for every mistake and crime committed by the Alliance. Kali Menethil then piped up. His disagreements are a distraction. Our divided sides only keep us from apprehending the one who gave the order. My head swiveled, waiting for Tyrande and Malfurion's reaction, but yet again, silence. So Chandris threw her two cents in instead. If we agree to... to a temporary understanding, then we do so not to exonerate the Horde entirely. I see no reason why this cannot be. I see many reasons. Tyrande then showed visible signs of frustration, and Thrall couldn't help but feel like the moon had just grown slightly bigger. But Malfurion leaned over and placed a hand on his wife's shoulder. It was not yet time. This was folly. Let them go. When you have washed the bodies of thousands, when you have fallen to your knees and kissed the feet of a thousand mourning souls, when you look into their eyes and tell them our horde has changed and they believe you, only then will I accept your apology and treat you as my equal. My brethren here may be willing to entertain your empty pledges of justice and aid, but I know better. I have learned better. Elune's fury grew colder and brighter in Tyrande's skin with each word, and Thrall was genuinely worried the moon was about to fall out of the sky and crush them any minute. How many orphans did your horde create that day? Those children will grow. They will wake each morning tasting ash. And one day, they will come for you, and they will make you taste that same ash. And then you will know their justice. Yucca nudged Thrall and started muttering, This was a mistake. I should not have brought you here. We should go. And so... Bane, Kalia, and Yucca started to exit, but Thrall remained for a moment, causing Tyrande to direct her final words to him and only him. You will find that justice less sweet than the sorry excuse for punishment you faced. And when this justice comes, there will be no armistice to save you. Yucca grabbed Thrall's arm and yanked, but Thrall disagreed with the shaman's assessment. It was right that they'd come. It was important. 
Thrawler believed that what Tyrande wanted was the Horde's remorse, but now he'd realized his error. I will bring what is owed then. I will not bring words or promises. I will bring you the head of Sylvanas Windrow. Tyrande then smiled the faintest of smiles. Do it then, or never seek to speak with me again. And we're leaving it there! Ooh, uh. Tyrande actually scares the shit out of me recently, I'm not gonna lie. She's bloody furious. Obviously, I'm not going to upload on Christmas Day, because it's kind of pointless, and we'll all be busy and stuff. So I'll see you next week. But have a Merry Christmas, or whatever holiday you celebrate. As usual, link in the description if you're interested in buying this book. Also, there's links to my Discord server and my Patreon page too. If you enjoyed this video, like, subscribe, all of that bollocks. And all that's left to say is, thanks for watching, and see ya!